Violator, Wayne Mabry, just in time. I got the V57 four pack. V57 cigars. We're about to go into the interview with my guy, the Violator, Wayne, AKA the Violator. V57 cigars. Thank you, brother. I appreciate this. And they will go to good use tonight and at the comedy night and, and state social and drove stogies. And you get, you get the picture. Check out the latest episode of Meet the with The Violator. LA Radio Now YouTube channel. Subscribe now. Check it out. Peace. What's going on, everybody? Troy Rawlings here. Welcome to another exciting episode of Meet the. I know it's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you. But we come back hard and direct with, uh, you, you know, the word fan is short for fanatic. When it comes to football, I don't think there's a more recognizable fan, definitely across Raiders Nation. But, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, y'all make some noise for Violator in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, Troy? What's up, brother? Look, pleasure, man. I appreciate you having me on. We're going to get into the gist of how we met, and we're going to talk about cigars. Yes, yes, yes. Violator, we met, um, actually, I think we met through Secret Smoke Society, one of the cigar um, uh, functions, one of the cigar groups. Big shout out to Antoine Chambers, Secret Smoke yes, Society sir. on Facebook. And um, we were talking about some, me and you rapped about some stuff, and we were on the, we were rapping on the business side. But when you told me, you know, about Violator, I'm looking at all this stuff, I was like, man, this is, this, you alone having a product is mega because everybody recognizes you from the football world. Right. Being a fan, Raiders Nation. How did you come about, or let, let's do a little, little background. Where are you originally from? Originally, I'm from a little town called Mound Bayou, Mississippi. Ooh, Mississippi. And Child how did you get... And did you did you migrate to LA? Did you were you always a Raiders fan? How did that come about? I became a Raiders fan back in 1970, and at that time I was still in high school, and uh, just got smitten by that shield because I'm all I've always been into medieval battle. I'm one of those kind of cats, and uh, upon seeing that shield, it was love at first sight. So I set my sights on California based on a shield. So this this goes back for you, even prior to you realizing that the, the Raiders were a team with the shield. Yeah, so always, it was a shield. It was a shield. So you, you clock in, you clock in, you become a Raiders fan, you become... When, when did Violator come about, though? When How did you... Cause that's a that's a whole creation in and of itself. Well, we're talking we're talking 30, 32 years back from this day that we're talking. Thirty two years back, uh, in the middle of the L.A. Coliseum, with that sophisticated what I call sophisticated crowd, but on <laughs> game day they wouldn't let their hair down, and 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 I took offense to it. Me and a three other buddies of mine. So we decided to give them something to pay attention to because we were gonna just show them how they should be feeling. Sort of the game day experience. That's what this is all about. Yeah, because a lot of people don't, I mean, it's it's like you said, and that was then. Now with the big screens and the, them bringing food to you and it, people forget that this is supposed to be, this is the one place you're supposed to let the, all your inhibitions Go hard, have a ball, and have fun. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, uh, Troy. I've been calling it therapy for at least thirty of my thirty-two years. It's therapeutic. At sixty-seven, brother, I feel like I'm forty. Sixty-seven. Yes, sir. God bless. Yes, indeed. So, all right. So we met in Secret Smoke Society. Th those of you that know, I started an article with Sheen Magazine called. Cigar Sips and Socials. I've been traveling around the Los Angeles area, checking out some of the different lounges. 
I recognized I had a lot of friends of mine who were already in the cigar life. Antoine Chambers being one of them, known Antoine since the 90s back in Baltimore. And, um, and I thought he had a lounge, but what he had built was a community. And part of that community, when we all came in, and my man Wayne, and when he was there, he was like, well, I don't know about this. I might want to do this, want to do that. And he didn't, you're so, and I have to give you your flowers while you're here. Violator, you didn't know, I guess you knew about what you were doing according to the Ravens Nation, stuff like that. You didn't recognize that outside of that hub, people know who you are, recognize your character, and how how powerful it would be if you expanded some kind of product outside of that. What, what When did you get involved with cigar culture? Well, I'm going to take you back a little bit before you even came along. I got, in, I got introduced to the cigar world by my uncle, Andy. Uh, he was a, one of those newspaper throwing guys, you know, up at four in the morning with a stogie in the corner of his lip. And, I, and he looked so at peace. I watched him for about four or five months before I had the courage to ask him, why do you have that stogie? That's what we call him. Right, said, the little, the little, it in uh, your mouth just holding on to it. Just holding on to it. You know what? So he introduced me to it and let me learn to smoke it the wrong way so that I could appreciate the right <laughs> way. <laughs> you just hear you do. Yeah, just take it all in. <laughs> Brother, as, as dark as I am, and you can't tell about this, but as dark as I am, I was green. And, uh, <laughs> He says, I hear two rules. Don't throw up in my car and don't <laughs> tell your mom. Right, right. <laughs> 15 years old, Troy, 15 years old. I've never forgotten that first flavor. And that's what cigar smoking is about. Mm, mm. I, um, it's funny you mentioned your uncle, my uncle Arthur, and he's still, still around the days in his 80s. And big dude, factory worker, grab his big, that's when Dunkin' Donuts finally came out with the big mug. But before Dunkin' Donuts, all of them had the big mugs. These cats had the big mugs of coffee. They would take the work. They looked like a thermos. And uh, don't get inside of his mouth. When he gets to the house, he may have a little swish or something filtered, but he's an <laughs> avid reader. He would read 900-page books like it was nothing with his cigar. And every time you see him, when he going to work or something, he had the little just in the side. Of the one that, I don't know when he smoked the whole thing, but holding on to the last bit for whenever he had to light it. And I was like, but he seems so at peace. He gonna speak his mind, but yeah. he can go into a zone and be the most peaceful person in the world. And I didn't realize until I got more into the culture recently that oh, this actually. I mean, everybody got something. Steve Harvey talks about it. He was like, y'all can talk about different things. He said, but what this cigar does for me is it brings me down. So you violated all about being hype. And then you come out with the violator 57. V57. Let me give you a quick peek. All four blends. It's a mindset, brother. It's about two sides to every coin. And I've been blessed to have these for about five, going on six years now. And uh, it's just word of mouth, man. I just love meeting people that can enjoy these four sticks. We can talk about any and everything. So offline, I got texts in my address because we round the way now. So I got to get some of these goddamn violators in my life. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> back to the regular schedule. So. What made you do your own blend? You know, you go out, you, you're all over the world. You're all over the world some way, shape, or form. You're traveling, you're doing your thing outside of business, outside of what you do, um, what you were doing nine to five, and then networking and everything. What made you decide on your own blend? Here's, here's how the higher power works when you follow your purpose. I got con uh, connected to a manufacturer of Nicaraguan cigars. 
And just from posting on Facebook and, you know, social media in general, when I'm in my chill zone, I like to share it with the world. Mm -hmm. So this, this person reaches out to me with the idea of my status or, or viewability, followers, what have you. He says, I see you always have somebody else's cigar. Why not have your own blend? Piqued my interest, but I but to be honest, Troy, I pushed this whole idea off for a good two weeks. We didn't even return his call. Just like, man, I don't need this, some other flake running up on me, blah, blah, blah. But the whole cigar thing intrigued me. I'd seen professional athletes do the same thing. I'm right. like, that's a blessing coming my way. So I made contact, and like I say, Four years later, the rest is history. I've enjoyed it, enjoyed hearing the feedback from other people. That's a bond that you can't even put a price on. It has been, um, and it becomes lifelong. You know, we're mindful of health and wellness and taking care of what you're big on. You're big on health and wellness. Uh, yes. you, you, push, you push and advocate, make sure people are working out, vitamins, the whole nine. Um, that's on a whole nother level, but I can't describe the camaraderie that that this small stick, <laughs> even even if it's a Lancero, that that small it stick don't matter. You just got you just gotta have it in your hand, right? And the it's conversation starts. But the conversation starts from the time you light it to the time you light the next one. That's it. Two to four hours, we can disappear, and people will be like, "Where are you at?" Right here. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's me at the crib. My wife comes out on the patio. She calls it my, my lounge or something, my man lounge or something. I'm like, I'm right here in therapy. You know where I am. Right, right, right. I, I was looking for you earlier, about three hours ago. I was like. <laughs> right here. Game gone off, next one on. You just. So another thing that's just. So let me let me say this to some folks that uh that may not may have an idea and are scared to step out on it. You love going to the games, doing your thing, you seeing that people aren't hyped enough. You create something to make people feel more excited. Yes. It becomes a brand and multi levels of business opportunities come from that. Troy, you can't make that shit up. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> it just and like you just doing something that you love. I'm it, all of it is doing what I love. So it's not like any job I've ever had. And and how long? And you said thirty years now. Thirty two years of doing this. Thirty two years. Now now you have a and the dope thing about it is just like Clark Kent, Superman. You can go out. During the day, and people were like, "Oh, hey, like, hey, how you doing?" Yeah, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you and your right, suit, boot, he's doing his thing, this, that, another. And does it really feel like you're a superhero when you put your garb on? What I am, brother, is an ambassador for the game. An ambassador, I'm an ambassador for, the game. for the game. That means I talk to both sides all the time. Bringing people what? Together. Bringing people together. In corporate. Yes. And, and, and I'm just quite, I'm not going to drop names or anything like that. In corporate. And people, because he stepped out and did something for the people, corporations started coming to him. <laughs> he was telling me some stuff. I was like, yeah, who doing what? Said, oh, yeah, I didn't even think about it. But you're so much a part of the people and you love people so much. I mean, it's kind of crazy because you, you, do you get a chance to actually enjoy the game anymore? I think it's so intertwined over the years, brother, that enjoying the game is just seeing, it's more about the conversation with the guy to the left or the right of me or whatever. The score of the game, I forget soon after, but those conversations and connections I remember forever, and I hope they do the same. It's about those moments that all the money in the world, 
all the politics from whatever side. It's all about that game on that green grass. So it's a violator, violator 57. And the cigars are beef. So what are the four? Uh, we mentioned it, but we didn't mention what the four kinds of cigars you have available. Okay, let's see if I can do them. I just dropped one. That's my favorite, the black label. That's probably the strongest in the bunch. But they're all like 60. Maduro. Yeah, Maduro wrap, all 60 by 6 inch. That's the mildest. That's my Dominican and Nicaraguan blend. So it's kind of a honey sweet, you know, kind of like for the beginners or the soft smokers, I call them. Then I got my firecracker. That's a red label. Hot and spicy, brother. We call it hot sauce. That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, of course, the other one gets away, but that, that one is that one is infused with cognac. That's my purple label, infused mm. with cognac. So that goes perfect with a glass of bourbon. Nice. Yes. So, so I've been blessed to uh, get introduced in my own way to the cigar world. And like we were just talking about football, this is the same type business. One-on-one, -on -one, experience by experience. And the conversation is the glue. Like when the bill is behind you, I was saying the brick and mortar. Well, and that mortar. conversation is what ties it all together. Yes. Tremendously, tremendously. What do you have? Anything coming up before the, uh, I, I don't usually date these, but we're about to approach 2024 hard. Uh, what you got coming up in this, the rest of this season and the upcoming year? Anything in particular? Well, the rest of this season, I'm doing my usual, which is uh, doing my community service in Las Vegas, uh, along with Corona and Modelo. We go out and we go to stores. We meet the regular folks in their areas. So it gets to know them, know us as real people. So we push what the black hole is all about, which is unity. We push what Modelo and Corona is about, having a good time and fellowship. And so... Together, it's a win-win situation, but it puts a face to maybe that attitude that you see on the screen. It's a little bit different when we're talking face-to-face. -face. But along with that, uh, we have a, every Saturday before whatever home game, we're at the Carnival Court at Harris from 1 to 4. Harris we're out there representing, meeting the folks, meeting the fans from every team. It's an awesome experience, man. So... We're trying to put our footprint in that community. How's Vegas been to you so far? It's, it's been a new frontier, man. Uh, after I got over the initial pain of the actual move, <laughs> right. I started looking at it as a businessman. And that's fertile ground to me. Yeah. Now, everybody can't see your picture. But when you can see your picture, you damn well better look at it and get the colors right. And uh, it, it's beautiful, man, just stroking that canvas every day, just walking this thing out, man. That's right. So everybody around the area, if you're in Las Vegas, uh, Harris Carnival Court every Saturday before the home game. Yeah. Violator will be in the building. Um, how, did they get, how do people get in touch with you, get the cigars if they, if they are you just kind of doing it one-on-ones or how are you, what are you doing with the cigars now? I know we talked about it a little bit. But like I said, we're trying to formulate a website, but for the last four years, brother, it's just been contacting me through social media. I mm -hmm. give you shipping details and I hope you are happy because I'm happy that you're coming to me for my product. That's right. So how can people get in touch with you on social media? Uh, easiest way is probably Twitter at violator 57. Uh, Instagram, I'm under Mabry Wayne. It's just M-A-B-R-Y-W-A-Y-N-E. My name's spelled backwards. You'll see this beautiful mug right there. You're in the right spot because I'm <laughs> looking for you. Um, Facebook is just Wayne Mabry 57. So, you know, and I'm on uh, Twitter. I mean, Twitter, of course, tw uh, Threads, Snapchat, Unchat, uh, LinkedIn, all that good stuff, brother. So I'm just out there because it's all about spreading good seeds. That's right. 
That's right. Brother, thank you for taking a hot minute. We've been, well, not, let me let me tell you something. You know how people are busy in their normal lives and stuff like yes. that. It's Understand good. that when the season starts, I had a, had a window. I was like, I'm going to try to get over to Vegas to see. Once the season started, this brother was traveling like the team. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you only do home games? Do you travel sometimes? I do. I do. A, we try to do two road games a year. We just came back from South Beach at the Miami. Oh man, that was like spring break on steroids. <laughs> and, and I had to, I mean, you know, I had to dress go. every day, so me and the humidity didn't get along too well. But oh, it was wow. it was a great time, man. If you want to let your hair down, if you're not afraid, go to South Beach. Shout out to my folks. That's where I spent my fortieth birthday some years back. I'm still recovering. <laughs> I'm hey, wait, wait, about it, eight to eighty. <laughs> All right, bye later. I appreciate you taking time out, brother. We're going to blast this all over the place. We're definitely going to drop this in Secret Smoke Society. You'll see this on social media. Anywhere on social media, you can look at the comments and information below on YouTube or Instagram, and you'll find out where you can connect with Violator. And um, you can always DM me as well. And if you're interested in getting those, we're going we're gonna to be around. We're trying to get this brother to do a Los Angeles tour, but the season is hot. so. Stay tuned. We may be popping up somewhere, especially for all you Raiders fans. If you're a Raiders fan and you go to a, a certain uh, a certain um, lounge, a happy hour, what have you, hit us up. We're gonna get we're gonna get violated out, out here, yeah. especially in LA. Especially in yes, LA. Sir. LA and Vegas, we we about to cause some problems. Yeah. And this will be the first of many, brother, God willing. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I appreciate yeah. it, brother. Thank you for taking time out for me, brother. And thank you for catching. Catching up. I don't know. Are y'all off this Sunday? Y'all play this Sunday? Yeah, this is the only week that I I, I still don't get to sleep in because I'm helping. I'm moving beds and doing daddy duties kind of stuff, man. But <laughs> hey, like I say, this is what united us. So hey, till we get till we get to cut and light ourselves. We'll see oh, it's, it's, it's coming. I'm I'm it's gonna send coming. you. Uh, I'm, I, I keep saying I'm sending you my address. I'm sending my address now, but I just come to you. I just I just go. track you down. And... Yeah. Oh, we hit a lounge, whatever you want to do, brother. We just we just wait for the logistics to work out. That's right. That's right. Big shout out. Thank you so much for taking a minute, brother. My pleasure. I'll talk hey, to you soon. Keep educating and passing on good times to everybody that looks and listens. That's right. That's right. Big shout out, Violator 57. Violet, thanks so much, man. Pleasure. I'm out. Yeah!